Welcome to our new unit, Unit 8. Uh, it's Mendelian and Non-Mendelian Genetics. And, <clears throat> and we are starting the unit by talking about heredity. How many of you can do this? Have you ever tried to roll your tongue? That is an inherited trait. What about your ears? Have you ever noticed that some people have unattached earlobes and some people's are attached? Well, that's a heredity um, issue there as well. That's an inherited trait. Six fingers. That's an inherited trait also. Uh, here we have a little red-headed, blue-eyed baby. Eye color and hair color are also inherited traits. Here's an example of another type of inheritance. Um, skin color. All these different uh, colors and shades of skin. And skin is also an inherited trait, although it, it is not a simple inherited trait. So uh, if you look in the mirror and look at your special characteristics, a lot of those are inherited. Uh, some things are not inherited, and we're going to be talking about both of those. What is a trait? A trait is any identifiable characteristic of an organism. So... Um, on the previous slide, those were all different examples of different heritable traits. They are uh, inherited from parents. Um, but traits uh, could be external, like the color of your skin, hair, your eyes, or they might be uh, less obvious, something inside of you, your, the type of blood that you have, or if you are resistant to certain kinds of diseases, those aren't something external, they're internal, but they can, um, those are also traits. Heritable traits, again, are just the ones that you get from your parents, the ones you inherited. Um, they often obey very simple inheritance rules, but sometimes they do not. Sometimes they're more complicated. Genetics is the science of heredity. Some traits are not quite as simple as we think. Here are some examples of very simple traits. These are single gene autosomal traits, widow's peak. Um, you might look in the mirror and see if you have a widow's peak. You probably already know if you do or not. But this man has a widow's peak. This man does not. That's a, an inherited trait um, passed on uh, by one single gene. Uh, thumbs, hitchhiker's thumb. That's also an inherited trait passed on by a single gene. Um, so you can look at your thumb, see if you can do that. If you can do that, you have a hitchhiker's thumb. So let's look at some different kinds of heredity. Uh, acquired traits that are not heritable would be things like tattoos. If you go and you get a tattoo, <clears throat> you are not going to pass that on to your children. Um, the way you fix your hair uh, or cut it or style it, immunity or vaccines that you acquire, um, those are not heritable traits. You will not pass those on to your offspring. Bodybuilders, amputees, if someone has um, an amputation, they will not pass that on to their offspring. Likewise, if someone works really hard, trains, builds up lots of muscles, they're not going to be passing that on to their offspring. Simple heredity... Um, genetics, things that are passed on, um, hair, eye color, blood type, numbers of fingers, as we've just said, those are um, inherited traits, genetically inherited. Um, there are some traits that have um, strong heredity components to them, but they are also affected by the environment. For example, your skin color. You may uh, have received your particular skin color genetically, um, inherited from your parents. However, if you spend a huge amount of time in the sun, you are going to also have environmental factors that affect your skin color. Same with freckles. Your weight as well. You may have inherited a disposition for a particular weight, or uh, but ultimately, you know, the way you eat and exercise and what you do will contribute to what your weight actually is. Um, complex heredity would have major environmental influences. Um, 
but there would be a component of heredity involved as well. IQ, you may have inherited genetic components that sort of give you um, some kind of a, a range of IQ. However, there are a lot of environmental factors that are going to also contribute to that. Your personality, cancer, alcoholism, those are things also that there may be some genetic components to, but there are also a lot of environmental factors as well. Cultural heredity, um, that is something that is passed on, but not genetically. Um, language, religions, uh, beliefs, behaviors, those are things that can be passed to offspring, but uh, not genetically. So how do we know? How do we know if something is uh, inherited genetically or not? There are a lot of different ways that scientists look at this. Uh, there's selective breeding with dogs, for example, or, or um, other organisms uh, to selectively breed and see if certain traits are passed on. Um, identical twin studies, obviously there's not selective breeding, um, but for the twins that exist, um, their uh, medical records and um, statistical analyses can be done um, of the different populations to see if traits are being passed on or if they are not. Um, pedigree analysis is a, an interesting study as well. This is an example of a pedigree right here. And it is showing um, a royal family. It's tracing hemophilia, which is a disease where the blood does not clot properly. And um, it is tracing that disease in this royal family over four different generations. Here's the first generation, here's the second, third, and fourth. And uh, if you'll just look through this chart a little bit, the circles are the females and the squares are the males. <laughs> the horizontal line between a, a, a female and a male, that represents the, the mating, the marriage union, whatever, but the mating between those two and then the offspring would follow. They would be the ones that um, come down off of their line. Um, then we have other uh, marriages mating in here and, and uh, their descendants and so forth and so on. The orange squares are the hemophilic males. It is a uh, disease that is only passed on to the males are the only ones that will be uh, affected by the disease. The females, however, will... Uh, they can be carriers of the disease or not, but they will not contract the disease. And uh, this just shows how um, genetic inheritance can be traced uh, through a pedigree analysis. And here we are introducing a man named Gregor Mendel. Uh, you've probably heard of him, Men Mendel. He is considered to be the father of genetics. And he was a monk who lived in the 1800s. And he lived in a monastery. And his job was the gardener, one of the gardeners. And he grew a lot of pea plants. Um, he was very interested in mathematics and statistics. And at the time that he lived, the assumption uh, about inheritance was what they called blending inheritance. And blending inheritance, um, essentially, if you had uh, a pea plant, it was a tall pea plant and a short pea plant, uh, you would, at the time, people expected that, well, the offspring of that plant would be somewhere in between. Or if you had a green pea plant and a green pod and yellow pod, for example, some different traits, the offspring would produce something blended in between that. And um, Mendel looked at seven very specific traits. He discovered um, seven unique traits with these pea plants that were predictable and as far as their inheritance, and they had no blending. These are the, the seven different um, traits. He saw that uh, the pods, for example, could be either full or constricted, yellow or green, uh, one, one of the two of each of those, white or purple flower colors. They could have a round seed or a wrinkled seed. Um, they could be tall, they could be short. And 
he discovered that there was no blending. When the uh, plants with yellow pods and green pods were crossed, there was not a in-between yellow and green. There was either yellow or there was green, but there wasn't some blending as people had thought. Same with the height and with all of these traits, there wasn't a blending rule that was followed. He realized that this must be due to two factors. That's what he called them. A, for example, if we're talking about pods color, that one of the plants must have a yellow factor and the other one must have a green factor. And they're passing that on and their offspring will only obtain one of those factors. And that's what his assumption was. So in Mendel's experiments, he took, this is how he conducted them, he took true breeding green pods, true, we'll, we'll just take the color of pods as an example for the trait, and true breeding yellow pods, and when he crossed them, when he mated them together, um, he saw that all in this F called the F1 generation, all of them were green pods. There were no yellow pods at all. There was no blending, no yellowish green, and there was no yellow. They were all green pods. Then when he would breed F1 plants together, he would take two of these F1 plants and cross them and mate them together. He got both green and yellow in the next generation, in the F2 generation. So what was going on here? He asked himself. Here were his conclusions. He came to the conclusion that there were two factors that contributed to each trait. We call those factors today genes. And those factors each had different forms. And today we call those alleles. Actually, Mendel named them alleles as well. He did not use the term gene, but he did use the term alleles. And uh, each allele is a different form of that gene, or as he called them, factors. Some alleles are dominant, some are recessive. Some show and some don't, they hide. Only one factor passed on from each parent. Mendel came up with this idea, it's called the law of segregation, and we're gonna talk more about all of these ideas in, in uh, the future videos, so don't worry about that. But the law of segregation states that only one factor is passed on from each parent. So this, uh, this parent that is true breeding green only passes one um, factor on to the next generation, and this one passes one factor on. He also concluded that one trait does not affect another trait. He called that the law of independent assortment. And if we look at all seven of those different P traits, P plant traits, um, he's saying that the height or the flower color, they do not travel together in the exact same way. They don't affect each other. They're basically inherited independently. You might think, wow, this is great. We've known this now for a long time. Um, however, uh, when Mendel first proposed this idea, he was absolutely laughed at. They thought he was just crazy. Um, it took over 100 years to confirm his work and positively identify DNA and chromosomes as the reason behind his findings. So uh, he actually died before any of that was found out. Today we know, modern genetics, that DNA is responsible for these conclusions that were drawn by Mendel. We know that Mendel's factors are called genes. We know that genes are segments of chromosomes. So remember, here's a picture of a cell. Here's the nucleus in that cell. Remember, all, see all those chromosomes in the nucleus? Those are duplicated chromosomes in there. Here, here that's amplified. There's a, a picture of a chromosome. If I were to unravel that chromosome, I could find that it's made out of DNA. Remember the structure of DNA, that double helix that we talked about before? A section of that DNA is called a gene. So when we look at, here is another picture of chromosomes. Here's an unduplicated and a duplicated chromosome. Sections of that uh, would be called genes. Uh, one chromosome comes from each parent. 
We also know that. We know that a trait is the result of two genes working together, even if one is recessive. And we know that chromosomes are composed of DNA and that a single chromosome has many genes on it. So those are the things we know today and uh, that proved Mendel right in all of his conclusions. So is everything genetic? Well, yes and no, too, right? We talked already about things that are not heritable, um, and inherited from your parents genetically uh, earlier in this video. Here are some things that are simple, single autosomal traits. Uh, but human characteristics are determined by a number of things. Mendel's simple dominance and recessiveness that we just talked about, that's one way that... Um, genetic information is passed on, but there are others as well, and these are going to be topics um, for the rest of this unit. Uh, we have variations called incomplete dominance, polygenics, and gene interactions. We're going to talk about that later. We also have chromosomal inheritance, um, sex-linked uh, inheritance, X and Y chromosomes, Down syndrome, colorblindness. Those are all examples of uh, sex-linked inheritance and um, interactions between genes and environment as well to different degrees. Here is just an example, although sometimes we simplify eye color a little bit, um, there may be up to 16 genes responsible for the overall pattern of color in your eyes. Um, there is the simple dominant recessive uh, genetic component at work between blue eyes and brown eyes. Uh, brown eyes are dominant, uh, blue eyes are the recessive, but there are also other things, little, the little flecks of brown in people's eyes um, and other shades and variations of coloring, and there are multiple genes that are actually involved in some of that. So it is not quite as simple as what we've just discussed, but we'll be talking about that further in the unit. If you would like to do some more looking into what we've discussed and go for some advanced ideas. Please ask your own questions, get creative, look at some things. I listed some questions here for you if you're interested, um, and I look forward to seeing you in class.